Welcome. Welcome to the Books and Music Review Show. And hope that you've had a good week and hope that I'm glad that you're back to see another episode of the Books and Music Review Show. So let's go back into the studio and we'll see what's happening. I'll let you know what it's going to be about in a couple of minutes. I'll go out to the studio. I think I'll bring this with me. We usually air on Saturdays at 12.30 in the afternoon. We're a daytime show. OK, so I have sunglasses on. OK, first thing I have to do is essential the lollipops. Oh, I'm not on air. I just realized. Hold on, I got to switch that screen. We'll switch that to another camera. Camera. OK, there you go. So I'm going to let that go on automatic a little bit so you have some information. And then we'll shut it off. Yes, you can reach us all over the place. So oh, they go up here. There you go. So today, we want to talk about, oh wait, I have a note. There you go. We want to help um, children. Today is a show we're going to help children. How are we going to help them? There's been too many of them in the news lately. Too many uh, about children being bullied. Serious consequences, children being bullied. So how do we prevent bullying? How do we stop bullying? How do we change, turn the tide? Hold on, that's technical difficulties due to me and myself. <laughs> Let me go change that. Welcome to the Books and Music Review Show. There's our information. Contact us. Tell us how you like or do not like the show. OK, hold on a second. OK, so welcome to the Books and Music Review Show. Yes, you can hear me. My mic's on. The timer's set. Everything's together. I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to be organized, but back to bullying or anti-bullying, solving the problems that bullying causes. Got my piece of paper. Got the DVDs. OK. So what if your child is being bullied? What's the normal reaction? What happens? How do you solve that problem? What if you're a teacher? What if somebody comes to you and says, somebody in the class is bullying me? Someone in the school is bullying me. How do you react to that? How do you react to that? I'll tell you one thing that's been happening in some of the schools and colleges and high schools and recreation centers and all over the places. They seem to have, uh, even online, if you go online and watch some videos about bullying and how professionals handle bullying, one of the things that they've been doing is something that's all wrong. Ta-da! She said the professionals are wrong. OK, I have to take that back. I'm not supposed to say that. If I was on conventional TV that had sponsors, I'd have to say, um, well, I misspoke. How could professionals be wrong, right? So I take that all back, scratch that. I'm not going to edit it. Pretend we edited that. And we'll go on to the topic of how do you solve the problem of bullying. One of the things that professionals are doing is they have this misguided notion, this misguided idea that when some child or teenager or college comes to you and says, I'm being bullied, that they have to bring the two of them together, that they have some kind of a discussion, that they have to come to the table together. The bottom line is the misguided notion that, that both the, the bully and the victim are equals. That's wrong. And I'll tell you why it's wrong, you professionals who might not know any better. Because most times, that's most times, the majority of times, not every time, but most times when a victim or a target comes to a professional, a teacher, 
whether it be a high school teacher, a college teacher, or whatever, or some kind of a worker in an educational setting. Most times, that victim has been bullied by the person for quite a long time, whether it be weeks or months or sometimes even years. Yes, there have been cases where a child would be in first grade and he'd still be bullied in the fifth grade. So most times, since the target has been bullied for quite a while by the same bully, it is not really profitable or it's not really productive. It's not really the right thing to do to bring them together and to start on an equal plane or to try to understand why the bully is bullying. Enough of this. I can't say that word on TV because we have a general show. So enough of this. We don't need to understand why a bully is bullying first. You can understand that later. You can do that later. But the first thing you have to do is acknowledge that there's a bully and there's a target. There's a target and there's a bully. And both of them should be treated differently and handled differently. Why? Look at the criminal justice system. Just take that for an example. Say you have somebody who's walking down the street and gets mugged by someone. Does the police officer bring in the one that's got, you know, the gash in the head and been mugged and bring him in and say, well, you know, we have to, you know, uh, shake hands and come out fighting? Does the justice system say that um, someone who's raped or mugged or attacked has to come in and um, have a casual conversation with the bully before they proceed forward? No. So when you got somebody who's being bullied in a school situation and they've come to you and they, they tell you in blatant words and so, so many words that this person did this to me, this person is doing this to me, and you as a professional or as a teacher or as any kind of a professional in an educational setting um, says, well, we have to sit down and talk about this and have a big, long discussion when the complaint is quite clear. <coughs> it's wrong to say you can't go any further, to say you can't talk about it any further, to say we can't do anything to the bully. We can't even talk to the bully. That's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. The least you can do is bring the bully in and tell him, look, your secret's out. Your secret is out. Someone told me that you were bullying someone. That's the very least you could do. So there's a good book, which none of this comes from that book. This is just from the Books and Music Review Show. There's a, a good book called Free Us From Bullying. And the subtitle is something like, you know, it's more than being nice. You know, it's like basically paraphrased is like, you know, enough of the nice guy. Enough of the like, you know, open your heart to the bully. Let's handle the target, handle the, the, the victim first. Let's hear what they have to say first before we have to be concerned about why the bully is bullying. It's no different than when you see like the school shooters or whatever, or when you see people out there committing these heinous crimes. The media, you know, there's a fake news. The media is like constantly like, well, why did they do it? Even they, they will write about a crime in the newspaper and they'll write something like, um, this guy, I'll, I'll give you the example, this guy mugged this woman um, because somebody was teasing him. Like, who gives a about why the guy mugged the woman? The facts are these. The guy mugged the woman. Ta-da! We don't care why you did it. You mugged a person. That's it. Somebody bullies a person. That's it. You bullied someone. I don't care why you did it. Free us from bullying. The name of the author is, uh, what's his name? Paul. I think his name is Paul T. Coughlin. C-O-U-G-H-L-I-N. Paul T. Coughlin. Free us from bullying. And we have tried to get it at the bookstores, but you have to order it through the bookstores. So call him up a couple of days ahead of time and order it from the bookstores. Ask your librarian to get this book because maybe, maybe if enough people get this book, if enough people read this book and if enough schools and educational systems and centers and all decide to read a different kind of book about handling the bullying problem, maybe we can change things. Maybe we can change the news stories of next week and next month and the month after. Maybe. 
change in policy might mean a change in someone's life. Now there's a book called Protecting the Gift by Gavin De Becker. Gavin De Becker, capital D E B as in boy E C K E R. Gavin De Becker wrote a book called Protecting the Gift. And that is for every parent and every guardian who has a child, a toddler, a teen, or whatever, because this actually basically toddlers, babies, someone who you might need a babysitter for, someone who you're getting to stay with your kids, maybe you're going away for the weekend or whatever. You need the book called Protecting the Gift because Gavin De Becker, who wrote The Gift of Fear, wrote Protecting the Gift, and that's all about children and all about how to find out about your babysitter. It's all about how to get the best babysitters and the best nannies. And it's all about the questions. <coughs> <coughs> Again, I forgot the water in the outside. So. It means I'm talking too much. Yeah, I start coughing. I'm talking too much. You need water when you talk. So protecting the gift. If you're about to hire a babysitter, about to get a nanny, maybe get an au pair or whatever they call them. If you're about to get a housekeeper, someone who's going to have access to your children, you need to get the book Protecting the Gift. You can get it from practically any library at all. If your library doesn't have it, your library should have it. Please go ask your librarians to get the book Protecting the Gift by Gavin De Becker. If you have kids, you need that book. I wish I knew this. When my kids were younger, I wish I had that book. I didn't. It was a very good book. Now, about the children. This whole thing is going to be about children. About the children, we've heard that there have been measles outbreaks. Yeah, measles outbreaks. There's also been another kind of outbreak. Let me see if I have that with me. I'm going to have it with me. I do. A lot about break. Hold on a minute. Okay. Oh, this was really bad. It wasn't in Staten Island, but it was in uh, Philadelphia. 11 year old commits suicide over incessant bullying over his weight. Uh, yeah, he was 11 years old. Now, to get to the measles outbreaks, which I started talking about, I'm looking for the note that I made on here, if it was here. Measles outbreaks, there's another kind of outbreak. Maybe you've not heard of it. Here it is. No, measles outbreak in New York. Requires vaccination in parts of Brooklyn. Did you know that? Yeah. This is the epicenter of measles outbreak. It's a very terrible, uh, very, very troubling, must be dealt with. That's what Mr. de Blasio it says Mr. de Blasio in this news report, said at a news conference, the measles vaccine works, it's safe, it's effective. How can he know if it's safe and effective? Well, he says, the mayor said it's safe and effective and it's time tested. That's what he said. It's like the thing he said, she said. So um, the mayor says the measles uh, vaccination is safe. I'm just repeating what he said. Now, oh, so what I wanted to tell you about the measles is it's just highly coincidental, it's just, just coincidental that many, many of the measles outbreaks are in sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. That's just coincidence. We're not saying it's connected or that one has to do with the other. But coincidentally, all of the disease outbreaks are happening very near or in the sanctuary cities. Um, then there's another news note in IFL science. A paralyzing illness in kids is on the rise, but doctors continue to be mystified. I don't know where these doctors are or why they're mystified. And it tells you the symptoms where it actually is a paralyzing uh, illness, a polio-like illness. But there are a few solid ideas about how it develops or how it could be treated. For the doctors who are puzzled or who have no clue, I would suggest you start, start with the countries that don't have vaccinations. 
If you have 10,000 to 15,000 people coming over your border from other countries, it's likely that many of them don't have vaccinations and um, might need to be checked or might need to be vaccinated. I'm thinking that's just an idea. That was what I was thinking. Another news note, they said that the ACLU is um, supporting Chick-fil-A against religious discrimination in the city of Buffalo. The assistant director for the ACLU, the legislation affairs, Erica Lossbury, said that the city is acting inappropriately in a statement called to the Hill. So um, the First Amendment does not permit NFTA to base its contacting base its contracting. And that's the end of the article. I don't know where the rest of it went. We'll read that another time. We'll get back to that. If you have it, send it to me. Okay. Um, oh, my goodness. On April 3rd, that was quite a while ago, uh, there were three more, more women that came through with allegations against Biden after a pledge to change behavior. First off, they're only allegations. They are allegations. He hasn't been charged with anything. So we have to realize that they're only allegations. But second of all, I saw his apology. That was not an apology. It's like, I'm sorry, if you're going to apologize, you don't make a joke. You don't make a light of it. You don't make fun of it. So I'm not one of these women that came out against him. But I'm thinking if I was them, I'd be like, was that an apology? He's like made fun of it. Kind of made light of it at... Uh, one of the gatherings and get-togethers, they showed him, and he kind of made a joke about it, that uh, he got permission to hug somebody. That was his joke. It wasn't funny. Never is funny. Okay, so what else in the news? We're not a news show. We just started talking about protecting the children. Also, um, I'm not going to read you that one. <laughs> I'm not reading you that one. But I'll read you this one. A man, the man accused of murdering New York, New Jersey nanny was twice deported, illegal immigrant from Honduras. Um, the man accused of murdering New Jersey nanny was twice deported, illegal immigrant from Honduras. Um, that was a news note from the Washington Examiner. That's a news story from that. What else? Hmm. Two other very interesting news stories, which I'm not going to say anything about. Then there was another one. This is from The Blaze. Illegal alien ordered deported in 2017. That is the person accused of killing an Alabama school teacher in a head-on crash. So Marcus, according to this news report, is charged with vehicular homicide and leaving the scene of an accident with injuries. Prosecutors say that the suspect is an illegal immigrant from Guatemala who was previously arrested in 2017. He was given a court date and released. And I think this is a good example, I think, of why, um, why our, our government leaders are saying that it's, it's not good to catch and release. Because <coughs> sometimes stuff like that happens. I need water. Okay. I'll get back to the kids. Get back to the kids. How do we help kids? Wow. I can't say anything about that either. I think I mentioned this one on a different show. Can't mention that. So that's all for the news. Let's get back on to the other stuff. Okay. That's all for the news. Protecting the kids. How else can we protect kids? How can we protect the grown-up kids, the kids who are aging, the teenagers and the college kids? How can we protect them? One of the ways you can protect them is by giving them good books to read. There's information in books. And it's there just for reading and to get knowledge. You know, like the new library card said, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Sometimes knowledge is life-saving. And I want to recommend a movie, which is kind of cool. 
all this glum stuff and this happy stuff. There's a movie called A Walk in the Woods. Robert Redford, Nick Nolte, Emma Thompson, and it's, they're all, it's an old, old, old movie with old, old, old actors, but it was just so good. Sometimes it was funny, but if you like a wilderness movie where they go out camping and in the wilderness, kind of little bits of humor here and there, it's called A Walk in the Woods of Robert Redford. So we recommend that movie. So now back to protecting the kids, the college kids, the, the kids who are dating and older kids. There are some books I would recommend. You, I would recommend that you get and to put in your home library something called The Sociopath Next Door. I forget who wrote it, but whoever wrote it is a PhD. It's called The Sociopath Next Door. <coughs> Excuse me, did I just cough into the mic? Sorry. And, hold on. Oh, the reason I have the book in front of me is I set the timer. I set the timer, I started the timer. That's organization, isn't it cool? I remembered everything because it was right down here in the book. Set the timer, start the timer. Put the credits on. There you go. And our email is on. What's next? Oh, it's over here. I have seven minutes. And I guess I want to talk to you a little about God because I love God. I am a firm believer in the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm an expert on fear because I'm afraid of everything. Yep. A lot of people don't know that. I'm afraid of practically everything. And you're sitting there going, like, how's she doing TV? Yeah, I'm practically afraid of everything. I'm not afraid to do TV. But everything else, yeah, I'm a chicken, a coward, someone with a lot of fear. So I'm going to give you some moments of peace from God because that's where I get all my strength and, and I kind of get my peace from God also. So it says, and I will give you, I will give peace in the land and I can't see with those glasses. <laughs> and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land and neither shall the sword go through your land. Leviticus 26, 6. This one kind of gives me a lot of peace. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That is truer than true. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. I'd be in trouble if I had to do that. Leaning on my own understanding. I don't understand much. And in all my ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So I said I was afraid of everything. I would not be able to do television, but I get strength from the Lord and courage from the Lord. I would not be able to come out of the house. Um, if I didn't have my Bible or my faith, um, I was damaged so much by being um, in a serious bullying situation for many years, probably decades, that I am pretty much afraid of almost everything. Yes, I mean that. I'm pretty much afraid of almost everything. But the Lord uh, gives me strength to go outside of the house, to get outside once in a while, to do television for almost 20 years, almost. You will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is steadfast on you because he or she trusts in you, trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And that's what I have, everlasting strength because it comes from God. It couldn't come from a person. God brings me people, all of his earthly angels, the good people that surround me. Strength from the Lord. 
And you want to know more about strength? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. And uh, this is my grandfather's favorite, <laughs> and so it's one of my favorites. Tom, this is for you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. And he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23, 1 to 3. And I just realized, I have that mic on. I'm not talking into the mic. Did you even hear me? That's all right. God hears me. From the very beginning, even before Moses wrote the first books of the Bible, God had you in mind to love, protect, and to give his children eternal life with him. Oh, I lost the name of the book. I think that was the Book of Hope, or the Book of Peace. It was a very good book. Sometimes I cheer him up. So those are some words. And I just realized I only have 2 minutes and 34 seconds left. Yeah, so hmm, 2 minutes. And what can I say in 2 minutes and uh, 24 seconds? Piece of my artwork. Ta-da! I'll show that close up one day. It's, um, it's just a rough draft for a piece of artwork that I'm working on. I call it the green door. Yes. It's red, but I call it the green door. I'll explain that another time. Oh, so this is the Book of Hope, which I did not read from, because I want to give you hope. See, like me, I'm afraid of everything. I mean, I don't know how I get up in the morning, how I get out of the house. I'm just a very fearful person. So I read a scripture, and I get strength, and I get brave. And I remember that the Lord is my light and my salvation, and the Lord is the strength of my life, Psalm 27. That's about the story. And I promise you this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I have to go outside and put this thing on the screen because otherwise we won't have the disclaimer on. I mean, they produce it on. I have one minute. You're watching the Books and Music Review Show. Let's see if I can put that on. There you go. That's the disclaimer. Oh, 45 seconds. I've only got 45 seconds left, so I guess I could leave that on there. So anyway, watch us on Saturdays at 1230, Channel 34. You can disagree with anything I have to say. Just do me a favor. Just write us. Send us an email and disagree with us or agree with us. Do you love the Lord? No matter what you believe in, believe in a God of peace, one who brings peace to you, who will give peace to others. That's the way to do it, right? 12 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, oh, three.